Welcome back to Liquid Lunch. We got Dave Kane here. Dave, uh, been looking forward to this interview uh, since we spoke on the phone, I guess, last week. Yeah. And uh, so uh, let's get into this whole topic of uh, Ormus Gold. Now, we were talking before you got in here. I was uh, both of Vanessa and myself have taken before mono atomic gold and i okay. think in our conversation you were saying it, it is kind of the same thing it is the same of, thing it is the same the, thing yeah it's different different names ormus is a more recently coined name and ormus is more of a, a name that refers to a group of materials in what we're we're beginning to call the ormic state so the ormic state is a fifth state of existing elemental material. So anything that you're familiar with will come as a solid or a liquid or a gas. If it's supercooled, it will take on plasma properties. There is a fifth state of matter called the ormic state. And what happens is the, um, or what's believed to happen, is that the molecule, the atom of gold or whatever you're working with, will shed its outer electron ring and go into a high spin state. Mm -hmm. And in that state, it is no longer chemically bondable with other materials. Mm -hmm. It is inert. Mm -hmm. But in our bodies, it works in a governance and regulatory capacity because um, it, it's no longer chemically bondable, mm -hmm. so it can't be analyzed. It isn't analyzed by valence bonding, which is what most conventional analytical processes do. So this is why this stuff hasn't been discovered until very recently, because it doesn't correspond to conventional analytical equipment in laboratories. So it's, um, what we do know is that 5% of the dry weight of the human brain and nervous system is constructed of materials in the ormic state. So it's always been there, it's always there, and there is virtually no research being done on this at the university level anywhere in the world. We're trying now to get doctoral studies set up in Poland through a retired professor in, uh, in Peterborough. And it, it's starting, it's coming, but there seems to be uh, no avenue to get this, uh, the attention that it deserves in North America. We're trying, we've been trying for years. It's, it's um, really interesting. I, and we had the opportunity mm -hmm. to take some monoatomic gold. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't Ormus gold. But you're saying it's all the same it, kind of it's, thing it's anyway. It's the same thing. Okay. Because the material is referred to as monatomic, a single atom. Mm -hmm. So if you take the metal gold and you purify it to the uh, monatomic state, it purifies as a white powder. And as that white powder, it's got magnetic properties. If you have it on a sheet of paper or in a jar and you pass a magnet below it, it will jump away. Mm -hmm. So part of what seems to be happening is that because of our electromagnetic exposures, we are losing these natural ormic materials. So the stronger the exposure, the longer the time, the more materials you lose. Mm -hmm. This is, it looks like it's the mechanism of why people end up getting brain tumors in the cell phone ear. Um, study out of Sweden about a year ago showed that they can tell the manufacturer of your cell phone by the shape of the tumor because that particular tumor relates to the signature array on the cell phone. Hmm. It's I, scary. I, I thought those studies were all debunked by, uh, mm. by researchers uh, who were paid for by the cell phone companies. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it works, isn't it? Well, that must right? be, uh, yeah, that's yeah. 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 So, uh, independent uh, research. So. Now, I've seen, uh, I've seen some uh, really interesting uh, stuff on the internet about, uh, about um, monoatomic that it was uh it's known that they were uh they were using this stuff in ancient egypt very very old yeah there's uh actually an egyptian hieroglyph for what they called showbread so the actual hieroglyph just looks like a little dish mm -hmm. with a high cone of powder in the dish mm -hmm. um, in the bible for example when moses went up the mount to collect the tablets the Israelites collected all of their gold together. They fashioned a golden calf and they were worshiping it when Moses came down. Well, it says exactly in Exodus 32, verse 20, it says, Moses smashed the calf to a powder. He strewed the powder on the water and he made the Israelites drink of it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. Moses was part of the Egyptian royal family 
and they had been trained as alchemists for thousands of years because these materials were available to the high priests and to the pharaohs. Okay. So All right. So why, so why would they be um, only the, the high priests and the pharaohs were, had access to well, this? Well, because they were the elite, I would imagine it's the same as today. Uh, how come a certain percentage of the elite have everything and the rest of us don't have very much? It's part of the hidden knowledge that's been passed in leaps and bounds you know, through history, and today it's starting to become known again. It's gone through cycles. Um, in 1000 AD in France, when they were constructing the Chartres Cathedral, the Knights Templar were contracted to make all of the stained glass windows for Chartres. And through time, there's a number of colors of stained glass windows, and those colors have never been duplicated in 1000 years since Chartres. Uh, when David Hudson was working in his lab on Ormus um, rhodium, they put it through, they were trying different things, they put it through a process where they super cooled it with water, cold water, very quickly. And the Ormus, uh, the Ormus rhodium powder congealed into a pinkish colored glass. Now this stuff sat around the lab for a couple of years and finally somebody put this story together that knew the story of Chartres. So they took a sample of this glass from Hudson's lab, went to Chartres in France, and it precisely matched one of the colors in the stained glass windows, hmm. which leads one to believe that the Knights Templar were working with various Ormic materials. So as far as I know, nobody has still tried other materials to match them to Chartres, but that's another area that needs exploring. Wow. So, I mean, when you think about what alchemists were doing, trying to turn base metal into gold, maybe well, it was this kind of thing that they were actually working on. You know, I, I think in, the, in the, long, the big story, that was kind of what was presented. They were trying to turn things into gold. But gold itself is actually, actually it's an extremely useless material. Uh, you'll use it on reflective windows. And other than that, they dig it up, concentrate it, and then they bury it. So, I mean, it's really a useless commodity. Um, the reason that I believe gold was important was because in ancient times they understood the importance of the white powder gold or the anatomical gold to life itself. Uh, when, when Jesus was born, they took him frankincense and myrrh and gold. They didn't give him a brick. They gave him anatomical gold. And Mary Magdalene was um, the daughter of the King of Jordan. And she was also fed the anatomical gold because it works to open our minds. It's a necessary material we need to have to function. And what we're seeing with our working with Ormus materials now is that people are chronically short of these. And when they start to supplement with these materials, all kinds of things change. It's just a whole myriad. We have enough trouble just writing down all of the different things that are happening to people. Again, it's relative to their shortages of the particular materials. So uh, certain things like um, when you take Ormus, probably 60% of the people that take Ormus, the very first night they'll have a change in their dream pattern. And I experienced this, most people do that take it. And whenever you dig in a little bit under the research, there's a guy in uh, Georgia, Thomas Geckler, has done a lot of private studies with EEG tests on people that take Ormus and the Lugano Institute in Switzerland in 2003. And what they found was that within two hours of taking Ormus, if you're hooked up to an EEG, the right and left brain lobe electrical activity starts to slowly come into balance in the alpha and theta ranges. And that takes a week to two weeks, depending on the person involved. Once you attain this equilibrium, a lot of things start to change. You have a feeling of uh, well-being, your abilities to discern improve, Reading improves, speed reading improves, neurological facilitation improves. Uh, we've had a number of people that had long-term L4-5 back problems, for example, and when the neurological messaging improves, these disappear. And it just seems to be that uh, they decompress properly at night because the wiring's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? these, these are the same, um, that's the same thing that happens when people meditate, the brain wave change. And people who Essentially, yeah. But some of the studies that they have done, uh, they've been able to show that people without long-term meditation training, for example, the Tibetan priests 
are capable of attaining a certain level of uh, theta and alpha for 20 minutes at a time. And they found, Hudson found that people that were taking Ormus without any long-term training on meditation were capable of taking the same theta and alpha ranges for three to four hours. So you oppose that with minimal training as opposed to somebody that's done it all their life. It, it's, uh, it's, it's just another example of how this stuff seems to work. Yeah, okay. well, that's what I find exciting is that yeah. people who haven't meditated for, haven't meditated, don't have a practice of meditating can achieve the same or, you know, similar results. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. That's, no, that's, Dave, you know, she's very sensitive to this stuff <laughs> because, uh, aren't you? Yes, she's I She's very am. sensitive. Can we take some right now and we'll see Absolutely. if she can react uh, live you, on the air? If you are sensitive to feel, do you feel energy with your hands? Yes. All you have to do is feel one of these. That's all. Now I have, we make six different Ormuses. <laughs> we make six different Ormuses that have different energy profiles. Yeah. We, we've had people simply keeping the bottle of Ormus under their bed if they're sensitive enough to it. Because when you douse the fields on this material, an M3, the field douses at 16 feet from the bottle. I better be careful. I don't want to have Well, can you feel that? I can feel it. Oh, yeah. What, what are you feeling? What are you feeling right now? Um, calmness. Um, I'm, you'll notice that I'm moving slightly. I, get, I do that sometimes. I'm not moving any muscles. You don't, you, you should, can, can we take some right now? <laughs> can, sure you can. Because I, 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 I'm willing to take some. I don't know if you're willing to take some, but. Uh, I should probably take a small dosage. Well, here. It tastes like chalky water. Yeah. All right. That's so all there is are these to all it. the same? No, these are different. These are different Let's ones. Let's take a look at Which this ones? one. I'll take the strongest <laughs> one, Dave, because I'm... Well, there isn't really a strongest one. It's a matter... Usually when we have people come and check this out, my partner, Ricky, will do energy field testing on the individual. Ah. All right? So she will pendulum test. Now, oh. you, you oh, can yeah. do this, Maybe. obviously. I, I don't use it with a pendulum, but yes. But I, whatever I way you energy. work to yes. test the energy wonder, field. So she might be able to tell so, which one I should take and maybe yeah. which one she should take as well? Absolutely. Is that, no, because so. each of these will feel differently. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So you have a gold, I think. Okay. All right. This is uh, an M3. M3, okay. Which this, this one here. We make this, this up. You stronger. will get different profiles. <laughs> this one's more grounding. This one here is the other one we make. Just tell me which one I need. Well, yeah, okay. so far this is, uh, I don't know which one you need. <coughs> I think you're a little bit too mellow today. Yeah, give me something to hype me up. <laughs> this one is, is fairly strong. This one? Yeah. Right here, so, Dave. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, Shake it up because if you want to have a major the bottles have a precipitate that settles one. down. This one is more. Um, if you have issues, they may be released yeah. using this one. So you know, I don't have any issues. No, none. I know you're perfect, <laughs> just as you are. <laughs> you're the first guy I ever met. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. oh, so what should I take? Like a teaspoon? Take a teaspoon, yeah. And this is M3. So. Yeah, now M3, we make it from three different ancient salt extracts. So these are combined. So one third of this is produced from unadulterated Dead Sea salt extract, one third from Redmond extract from uh, Utah, which is high in rhodium and iridium, and then a Celtic sea salt extract. So what it is, it's sort of like a, mu a multi mineral base with high points in gold, rhodium, and iridium. Do you want to catch this on the camera? Now swish it around your mouth before you swallow it. Not that camera. <laughs> Not that camera. <laughs> this camera here. There you go. There's not much to taste. <laughs> Delicious, isn't it? <sighs> Packs a punch. So, okay, if, it, so I, if you don't like the taste, you can always no, I mean, put it in your morning rutabaga juice or whatever. Exactly. No, it's a, it doesn't taste bad at all. It t like you yeah. say, it tastes like chalky water. Yeah. So uh, are, now are you going to take some there? Uh, I might take a microdose. See which one Here. suits you the best. Hold it to your thymus gland. And uh, we usually use that as a test because mm -hmm. most people can do this. 
And if it's positive, you'll lean forward. If it's negative, you'll lean backwards. Oh, right, and just right. test each Balance one test. to see oh, which one why didn't is, I think of that? is most appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is. See, we all have these. Good to take this today. We all have these tools. Nope. We just have to learn to use them. Is this in my highest good to take this today? It's a little bit forward. So this is maybe better. You might want to feel that one too. So when we is test, when we test people for this, we usually <laughs> test for their first two bottles. Yeah. Because well, these uh, two are good. Are, yeah. are positives. Yeah. Those are positives. You're getting a positive this vibe from those. Neutral. neutral. Is this in my highest good to take today? So uh, now, how did you get into this? Dave, well, yeah. originally about just a little over four years ago, I read an article in Nexus magazine from Australia, and it was on white powder gold. And I guess I read it in the early part of the spring, and there was it was unusual. I tend to be a very analytical person, and there was a lot of loose ends that came from that article that just simply didn't add up with things that I, you know, picked up along my path, and I just. Uh, started to investigate this a little bit more and about that time I met my partner Ricky and uh, she's a spiritualist she's very sensitive to energy and these were all things that I'd never been exposed to at the time mm -hmm. and it resonated with me I was very interested in this because I wanted to see you know dig into some of these uh, peculiarities and it also resonated with her so off I went digging in there and I came up with the David Hudson lectures which um, you can find on the internet. We've also got it posted on our website. It's about an hour and a half of lectures of the first 21 years that he worked with this material. He spent nine million dollars trying to isolate these materials because in or originally he was looking to produce precious metals from the Ormic versions that occurred on the surface of his property in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So that was what got him into it. The, the article got me into it. And uh, it just so happened that when we were digging into this, uh, there was a fellow named Barry Carter who's been working with this stuff and trying to promote its interest for about 15 years. He was coming up to talk in Toronto. So we went down to the Toronto Dowsers, and uh, that's where the meeting was. And we listened to a two-hour introduction. And um, at that point, there was a gentleman there that had a little bit of Ormus, so I got a bottle to try it out. And... Uh, they never really talk much about the things that did start to affect you. So the very first night that I had a teaspoon, I went home. When I went to bed, uh, normally I dream in color, but that night I had like super high definition textured three-dimensional color. It was amazing. And um, we found since that that about 60% of the people get that effect, and usually on the first night. Um, the next things that we start to notice are... Um, this calmness starts to come about you, and uh, physiologically, turning there's a lot red. of interesting things. Well, she's. I think uh, I'm turning red. She, Am I turning red? She just had some, and she's <laughs> giggling now. <laughs> and uh, what's going on there, uh, Vanessa? <laughs> <laughs> this is. This I, I, must be the happy one. Are you feeling it? It says gold. <laughs> I, th I think this can <laughs> this can add a new concept to your liquid lunch. Eh? I, yeah, are you feeling it or what? I'm feeling it all right. Really? Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, I'm in a really good mood. <laughs> yeah. Should I try some? Uh, some people. Everybody's yeah. different. Yeah. And it all depends on our shortage of these materials. But the thing is, it's like if you're thirsty and Nor you drink water, you know. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a substitute for a norepinephrine. <sighs> no. Because no. <laughs> it's a different state of matter. It's not chemical. There are no chemical things going on in your body from this stuff now. All this stuff will do is start to supplement shortages. Hmm. And it will work in your brain and nervous system. It will also work on a lot of things physically. Like usually within a week uh, when you brush your hair, no more hair in your hairbrush. Within a month your fingernail textures will change. Within 10 weeks in my case in particular, probably 80% of all the molds and tags I'd had since I was a teenager disappeared. Uh, my wife, Ricky, has been dyslexic her entire life. And at the age of 66, the dyslexia started melting away and it took about 10 months. No more transposing numbers, no more problems working with a computer, 
no more problems phoning people <laughs> that she didn't know, no more problems with rights and lefts. I've never found any evidence of dyslexia that has melted away. Mm -hmm. And yet this has done it. And I saw it right, you know, over the period of uh, the first year of taking it. We've been taking this now for three and a half years. Um, you can also use this stuff on your plants. If you take one teaspoonful, put it into a gallon of water, and use it on either indoor plants at this time of year, within about four weeks you'll start to see major changes in the plants. You'll see changes in the textures of the leaves, the size of the leaves, the growth. Um, you will change flowering cycles. Uh, if you use this to soak seeds and put them in the garden, you will grow things that are larger, healthier. They do not emit ethylene gas, so they do not attract pests. They do not attract funguses. And you're just going to have a remarkable garden. And a lot of the things will be, you know, anywhere from 30 to 80% larger. We've grown uh, rhubarb at home with leaves that are literally three feet in diameter. Uh, and the stalks are sweet enough. They're huge, but they're sweet enough you can eat the things without sugar. It's, it's really amazing stuff. Now, you can use eight drops in a 35-gallon fish tank. And within two hours, if you know your aquarium, you'll see its nature change. It improves. Things mellow out. The fish are happier. They're more active. They're better. You can use this on pets. You can use it on, we've used it on parrots, horses, dogs, cats, all sorts of things. And we've had a lot of people now uh, using the M3, which we made mostly for cancer, but you dab it on skin cancers, and depending on how thick they are, in two to 10 days, they fall off. We've seen this now dozens of times. Yeah, so I can just so. share my, my feeling. I just, I, ha I feel very focused right now and um, more alive. Um, yeah. yeah, more grounded, I think, Th also. This, this would be tick particularly probably good for you guys because you're in a very heavy electromagnetic environment here. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is supplementing materials that you're losing because of this electromagnetic environment. And it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. We've now got smart meters on our houses. Eventually, they're going to be endlessly talking with the next generation of smart appliances. So, I mean, there's nowhere you're going to go to get away from this. You know, the, the safety radius of a smart meter now, you need to be 92 feet away from that meter for your milligauss reading to drop down below two. And there's no research being done on this. Health Canada is up there saying everything's good and everything's safe, and these people haven't done any research at all. Everybody is taking the word of somebody else. In Peterborough, where I live, they're going to put in 10 more cell towers. That's going to increase the entire neighborhood radiation. Um, people are getting sick all over the place, and they're not doing any research. That's yeah. a good point. Because uh, uh, you mentioned radiation, of course, we're mm -hmm. talking about the the uh, the radiation that's escaping from the uh, nuclear. Well, that's just plant. at a different frequency. Yeah, but does this stuff? Is there any? Uh, do you have any? Like, can this stuff help people deal with the radiation poisoning uh, from? Uh, nuclear I don't know because meltdowns. we've never applied it. What this stuff can do is help bring our immune systems much closer to where they should be. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, I mean, you know, you're, you're, it also affects after a while things that you eat and diet. I've seen a number of people without really thinking no longer were taking pleasure out of food that wasn't giving them what they needed. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people that have been, you know, eating the regular diet just just change like without a particular bent towards changing it just seems to af affect things you know i've had that happen to me too i eat less junk yeah exactly you i mean that, that's what happens when your body gets cleansed yeah. you know you no longer feel the urge because you're yeah. not in tune it's like your yeah. your it's like your brainwave yeah. changes well, like you don't feel an attunement you don't feel Exactly. That it's your food anymore. You don't. You can't relate to it anymore. So you start eating more healthily once yeah. you're more healthy. Well, see, we respond to all of the stimulus that comes our way, and when your system is working properly, you are going to respond to the positive stimulus and tend to resist the negative stimulus, and that applies to food and everything else. Because if you're going to go and take. Um, a medical or an alternative medical protocol, if your system is in as good a position that it can be to accept this protocol or utilize this protocol, you'll have a much more positive result. It doesn't matter what it is. 
So, I mean, even to your food, you will have a better result to the correct food. But when we're always working in a deficiency situation, we can't do it. We've had people through the group that have started taking Ormus, and after a period of time, they simply forget to smoke if they're smokers, mm -hmm. or they cut right down because it seems that it doesn't leave the open neural receptors to be gratified by the nicotine. They get occupied by these materials that we're not getting in our diet. Um, there was a study done a number of years ago where they had 30 people taking Ormus Platinum. And I believe it started in, in October, and at Christmas they went to a Christmas party. 14 of the 30 people had an alcoholic drink, and those 14 people all got violently ill. There's been no follow-up studies to this, but obviously it looks like there's something that should be looked into. Because yes. if we had appropriate Ormus Platinum levels in our body, maybe it's something that we simply would have no interest in whatsoever because it is then causing us a problem. You're having a sick reaction. Why would you take something that's technically a poison? Yeah. So I'm curious if, if you have any uh, theory as to why it's difficult to find uh, the right you know, people to do the research. Do you think it's related well, to there, there's economy? There's a lot of re well, in the U.S. today, cancer is a 1.5, what is it, 1.3 billion dollars per day business? You know, if you cure your client, you lose a customer. I mean, that, that whole philosophy is pervading our system. This seems to have been introduced to our system around the time of the Reserve Bank in the United States. Because if you look at ads and things in the 1890s or the early 1900s, any commercial ads were pushing the quality of the product, the longevity of the product, and the work-saving characteristics of the particular product. After the Fed got in, that philosophy seemed to change. And a good point on that, in 1926, Alfred Sloan, who was the president of General Motors, at this time they were making five million cars a year. He went in and he addressed his board of directors and he said, gentlemen, we are no longer in the, in the business of making automobiles. We are now in the business of making money. So in the 13 years from the Fed, that philosophy started to pervade the system to the major companies, at that time the biggest company in the world, and then it started to permeate the system down to the little guy. So today, I mean, when the man comes to clean your eaves trough, he really isn't there to clean your eaves trough and make a real good job of it. He's there to make the money. So the focus, again, if you look back to the 1890s, you'll see how this whole focus for quality and integrity has changed over to money and, and lucre. Yeah. That's, that's what's happened. Yes. We have to change this back. Yeah. Yes. It's interesting that you would say that on the heels of our interview with Joe, the investor, earlier, because yeah. uh, he was talking about banking. Okay, oh, yeah. so we're just about out of time, uh, Dave. W would it hurt if I took another teaspoon of the different one that made her happy? Uh, no, it, it's not going to hurt at all. Okay. However, I would recommend you take it tomorrow to because to have the a pure test. is an yeah. accumulative thing. Uh -huh. All right? Yeah. It's like anything else. If you take vitamin C and you take over 1,500 milligrams, yeah. you're just going to waste it. Right. It's going to go down the toilet. These things, same thing. It's accumulative. And after a little bit of, of time, it, it really builds up and you start to notice more and more changes. We've had 8% of the people having vision improvement for improvements. We've had um, all kinds of improvements and all kinds of things. And we, have, we have a little girl in Florida who's been taking Ormus and she was born with cerebral palsy. So, you know, the fists were clenched, the arms are clenched and so on. Um, by the fourth day that she'd been taking it, her mother, then a friend, then two teachers commented about the improvements in her speech. And within three weeks, her hands were open 80% of the time. And today, she's learning how she can draw, she can paint inside circles and squares, her motor control's developing, and I mean, she's the only person in the world taking this stuff with C, uh, cerebral palsy that I know of, so. Okay, you know? so this is really, uh, Really good. How are you feeling there? Oh, great. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but I was feeling a little bit detached, and now I just feel mm -hmm. just. I don't yeah, you're very like sensitive. I'm very sensitive. Most, most people right? aren't that sensitive to it. Yeah. Like me, I'm 
I'm, I'm a bit of a slug. I don't feel energy. Yeah. I depend on other people around me, and then I just kind of watch the results and moderate it right. and utilize it, you know, into my toolbox of, uh, of ideas and procedures of working with this. I wish wow. I could feel energy, but I, I just don't. Wow. So, Dave, uh, so for people that are interested in following up, maybe finding out more about this, or maybe they want to get some Ormus for themselves, What's the best way for them to do that? Sure. Uh, the simplest way is to give us a call. We're in Peterborough. Our phone number is 705-874-0762. Uh, and we also have a web page, which is uh, humanagold.ca. That's H-U-M-A-N-N-A-G-O-L-D dot C-A. And we have quite a lot of information on there. And we also have the David Hudson Audio Lecture on there which is recommended because if you can listen to that, it's about an hour and a half, it gives you a good baseline with which to start to learn about these materials. That's great. Dave, thanks okay. for coming down today. You're very All welcome. All from Peterborough and uh, bringing us this uh, amazing stuff. Yes, and thank you for the opportunity to sample it. That's, yeah. I'm sold. <laughs> okay. All right. Dave, thanks so much. We're going to take a quick right. break, come back with uh, Ms. Pooja Amin director and founder of Sanskriti Arts. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.